This is question number 16 from the Integrated Math 1 practice test for 10 Radio TCAP. We're in subpart 2, so we're going to use a calculator here. Uh, the question says, question number 16 says, the height in inches of each student in Megan's algebra class is shown. Select all measures that will be affected if a student who is 77 inches tall joins the class. Now one nice thing they did, they didn't organize it in a long string of numbers, but if you notice they did put the numbers in numeric order, just going backwards. So if I were to do like a box and whisker plot or whatever, at every five it turns over, so here is the spot between these two, between 65 and 65, that that median value would pop in. Q1 would be right here, and Q3 would be right here. So we have to think, okay, which one of these will change? Um, so if we want to do that visually, we can do it. We can also look at it through the calculator here. I'm going to make a list of all these numbers, and I went ahead and did it so you don't have to see me typing numbers, which would be really annoying. But uh, there should be 20 there all in. And then I can do an analysis of the statistics. So, and by the way, in order to do that, in case you're not used to it, go to Stat, hit Edit, this is if you have a T84. Type in all your numbers. Make sure the final number uh, shows you in L1, which is the first list. There's 20. You should have a value there at 54. Make sure that you have everything matching up and all that stuff. So let's look at the statistics. We're going to do a calculation of one variable stats. And we're going to choose L1 as our list. If you have a different thing, you need to choose a different list and we're going to hit calculate. So it gives us a whole bunch of nice stuff that we can use. First off, it gives us the value for the sample. So I might write some stuff here. This is, uh, I'll just make it 1 and 2. So this is before and after, adding that 77 in. So the mean value is this, this is the value of mean value of the sample, so 65.3. The median value I can find by just clicking down. There it is, it's 65. The interquartile range would be the difference between Q3 and Q1, so I just need to do a little subtraction, and so that's 8. The range value, I just need to do the distance between the largest point and the smallest point, and the minimum value is 54, and the maximum value is 72. So 72 minus 54 gives me 18 and it even gives me a standard deviation. All of the ones that you're given are really easy to do by hand except standard deviation which is probably why they put this in the calculator section. So I'm looking at the standard deviation for and I'm using, I use the uh, form for the mean value of the sample size as opposed to an entire population. So I'll use S of X here to tell me the standard deviation for the sample. This would be the standard deviation of the population by the way. So I'll put that down here, 4.95, good enough. Now, in the second setup, I'm going to do the same exact thing. I'm going to go into the list and edit it, but I'm going to add that 77-inch extra person right there. Now I'll just go back and do all the statistics again out of the same list. So in this case, the mean value is... 65.9 the median value, I'll need to click down a little bit to get to that the median value is still 65, that didn't change the Q3 divided, or Q3 minus Q1, which would be the interquartile range, is still 8 so nothing changed there uh, my range value would go would obviously be more because I'm going from the same minimum value of 54 all the way up to 77. So it actually increases by 5 over 18, so 23. And then my standard deviation, I can just look at it and it'll give it to me in the sample set, 5.46. So let's look for any differences. Interquartile range is the same. Mean value has changed. Median value is the same. I'm putting checks next to the ones that are the same. Uh, range value would be different, so that's a change, and the standard deviation changed as well. Now, that doesn't match the key that you're given, by the way. The key says only, I'm going to erase anything that's not an answer choice. So your answers are B, D, and E. Uh, the key that you're given says only B and D, but as you, uh, 
yeah, only B and D, but not E. But the standard deviation does change because by adding that extra number on top, it shifts the overall uh, deviation from the mean. It's spreading out the data, so of course the standard deviation will change. Um, that's it. If you have to do it by hand, it adds a little bit of uh, difficulty to see what changes. You'll have to do the mean, like if you don't have uh, the type that will do statistics for you. You can just calculate the mean by adding it all up and dividing by the number of numbers. It's 20 in the first case and 21 in the other. The range is easy. You just subtract. I mean, that's whether you have a great calculator or not. Standard deviation is a little bit more complicated, so you may want to go fishing around for equation for the standard deviation. Um, but my guess is their expectation is you have at least a calculator that can do this. Um, when we start doing it on computer, I'm assuming the calculator that they will provide will start having that with it. But if you don't, talk to your teacher about what calculator that you're using and how to get those answers quickly because, as usual, stuff's time. So you want to make sure you have the best chance to do what you have to do.